Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is, oh, I'm looking at my board chair straight in the eye here. Um, it's uh, so exciting and such a privilege to have all of you join us uh, here today. I just can't thank you enough for being here with us uh, as we formally launch our new strategic plan. So before I begin, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek, which includes the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy, the Haudenosaunee and Wendat nations, and the presence of other First Nations, Métis and Inuit, residing in the Simcoe Muskoka territory. So again, thank you so much for being with us. We thought it was very fitting to launch our new plan this week during Mental Illness Awareness Week. And we're really pleased to have the opportunity to share it with you today. Uh, but before I get to that, actually to share with you some reflections on our achievements from our current strategic plan before we focus on our future directions and we gave the lead story away, serve, discover, and lead. So foundational to any strategic plan are the mission, vision, and values. And we are continuing to honor the feedback from our very first strategic plan uh, that we developed post-investment. Post and our mission, vision, and values uh, have not changed. And it wasn't because we didn't think about it. We did. Uh, we acknowledged that each of these statements continue to be relevant. Uh, and we did that at the beginning of our process, which has taken us over a year. Uh, and also midstream. So I know we have a very mixed group uh, in here today. We have um, people who know Waypoint and mental illness and mental health very well, uh, and others who maybe are newer partners. So I thought I would uh, start just by setting some context, particularly uh, around prevalence and some of the statistics uh, related to this. You probably have all heard there's been lots of media around the Mental Health Commission's one in five Canadians personally experiencing a mental health uh, problem or illness each year. But we actually like to say five in five people have mental health and everyone is somewhere on the mental health continuum. We know that uh, there is a, a, a fairly significant prevalence uh, across the age uh, across the age span, but we also know that uh, particularly with our youth, there is uh, 10 to 20 percent of Canadian youth affected by a mental illness or disorder. And so early intervention is key, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later this afternoon. We also know that there are significant societal and economic impacts, and you can see the bottom statistic, uh, half a million people not at work in any given week due to mental illness. As we developed our uh, strategic plan, and, and more particularly our clinical services plan, but we want to make sure that uh, as we look at the demographics of our area that we are reflective of the services that are needed by the population in our current local health integration network or our, our region. And it's really important to consider these needs as we develop a strategic plan. And so we looked at our population in Simcoe Muskoka. Seniors make up a large portion of our population. And you'll hear about some of our work around um, that group. And again, you can see some of the, um, in, uh, the uh, metrics related to youth and the significant need in that population, as well as um, socioeconomic factors, uh, lower income in our area than in others. Um, and uh, certainly our Indigenous population. So again, because we have a mixed group, certainly uh, those who are on staff know this well, others may have heard this multiple times, but just a little bit about uh, Waypoint. We have been a public hospital since 2008, um, and you might wonder what happened for the previous 100 years, uh, and it was operated by the, the provincial government, as were um, uh, 10 psychiatric hospitals across the province. We're one of four hospitals who have a singular focus on mental health and addictions. 
And at the time of divestment, we also became sponsored by the Catholic Health Sponsors of Ontario. And so we're part of that network uh, of um, healthcare organizations. Uh, 1,200 employees, 130 volunteers, and our annual operating budget is about $150 million. We're very grateful since becoming a public hospital to be part of the Simcoe County Hospital Alliance. And the, uh, the county has been terrific supporters of hospitals in terms of their uh, capital needs. And there was a, uh, some information in the lobby as you came in from our research institute, uh, which was formally launched in June of 2013, but that actually uh, was building on about 30 or 40 years of uh, recognized and rich research uh, that had gone on at Mental Health Centre Penetanguishene. Uh, we've listed, we're an affiliate, uh, affiliated with the University of Toronto, but also probably about uh, 20 or 30 other academic institutions. And in terms of the services we provide, um, our beds, our inpatient beds, just under half are regional beds and serve Simcoe Muskoka and beyond, as I mentioned earlier. 160 are the uh, provincial forensic beds, so much broader catchment area and the only um, service of that kind in the province. And then we also have a significant outpatient component as well, serving people uh, in the community. So our walk uh, back memory lane is uh, our looking at our accomplishments from our 2014 to 2019 um, strategic plan. And that plan has five strategic directions. And although we don't have the titles on each of these slides, they are pretty well grouped by those strategic directions. And so the first one, the reason that we're here, the patients uh, and the people that we serve, and so looking at some of the um, accomplishments in that area, uh, a new declaration of recovery values was launched. We're very focused on recovery in all of our programs. Um, we were chosen as the lead for regional specialized geriatric services. And I mentioned earlier the significant seniors population that we're serving. And again, uh, thank, thanks to the leaders of those programs, some information um, just as you entered the auditorium around that program. Um, we are also very focused, and I mentioned the Indigenous community, focused on making sure that the, the care that we're providing is culturally safe, uh, and that may be for the Indigenous community, but also particularly in our provincial programs, uh, we serve um, people from many, many different uh, cultures. Implementing an electronic health record um, I sometimes say just looking at one bullet and saying that sentence makes it sound so simple and so quick and it is not. Uh, and also one of the things I think we were very careful of as we implemented that was during the implementation there was a focus on improving patient outcomes. So it's not an administrative tool, it actually is very much a clinical tool and impacting uh, on patient outcomes. We also have a, a, a focus in our current strategic plan on our staff, and we uh, called that the people who serve. And so we are, uh, we've been concerned about making sure that we're creating uh, a healthy workplace, both physically healthy and psychologically uh, healthy. We've launched a Safe and Well campaign, which covers all of those components, a new code of conduct, which mirrors the de uh, declaration of recovery values for our patients, and really looking at uh, leadership um, development and how we might be able to do that. The healthy workplace standards, psychologically healthy workplace standards that we have been adopting, um, we've actually finished uh, year three and they came out of the Mental Health Commission of Canada and they're not for specifically mental health um, workplaces but actually all workplaces and so now we're into uh, actually looking at sustainability of that as we move forward. Our corporate performance uh, indicator looks at uh, financial stability, including fundraising, and so we have been fortunate to uh, maintain a balanced budget and, and reach our fundraising uh, targets because we're actually uh, very much neophytes at that, and that has only happened since uh, divestment. This uh, standard also looks at our physical building infrastructure, and we have uh, one new and maybe half a new building, I'm looking at our partner from Chigamic, uh, built, but we know that we have significant needs across our campus. It's a very large campus and we have 
some old buildings that uh, are not meeting patient needs. And also under here, looking at quality from a number of uh, perspectives, our annual quality improvement plan, uh, but really more recently uh, just validated through our uh, Accreditation Canada, so an external survey of the hospital and achieving exemplary status, which is the highest uh, status that you can achieve. And partnerships. Um, it, this is very important. There is no organization, uh, no matter what the size or what the scope of their services, that can be all things to all people. And so we partner at a number of different levels, uh, provincially with our peer hospitals as mental health partners. And the focus from that, on that work has been around quality, whether it is uh, performance measures in, uh, or increasing uh, access to services like uh, increased access to structured psychotherapy. And again, there's some information about that in the hallway. Regionally, I mentioned that we're the lead for specialized geriatric services, and we're also the lead for regional planning around mental health and addictions. And that has been uh, rich, deep, and longstanding uh, partnerships with many of those providers over a number of years. And I, um, I would say uh, our collective work has been very successful. Uh, I mentioned the electronic health record and uh, even that we didn't do in isolation. We partnered with Ontario Shores and then more recently uh, in this summer, the Royal in Ottawa came on to our shared electronic health record. And we're also privileged to partner with the Indigenous community uh, to support our cultural competence. Uh, and that includes through a research study currently underway. So you may have seen a bit about that in the hallway which is a good segue to last but not least, our research and academics fo focus. And I mentioned our very uh, long history of research, uh, originally focused primarily on uh, the forensic patients and programs. Uh, we have been expanding that over the last number of years so that we can impact patient outcomes on programs across the hospital and also a particular focus on um, knowledge translation. The Evidence-Based Advisory Council partners uh, research as well as our professional practice to ensure that any new knowledge generated is put into practice. And we also share uh, new knowledge generated in a variety of ways, and that may be through a number of publications, but also importantly through our annual research conference. So none of these accomplishments would be at all possible without the contributions of many, many people, uh, many in this room, across the hospital, and into the community with our uh, partners. And we're truly thankful um, and blessed to have everyone's contributions to these efforts. And so with, now, with that, I'll turn to now our uh, future orientation and what we are looking to focus on on the next number of years. So this fiscal year, which ends in March, we're finishing, as I said, our current strategic plan. And we're focused on um, a new plan that will direct our work perhaps over the next five years. There's been uh, certainly a lot of system transformation in the provincial health care system. Uh, so we'll see uh, whether it uh, stands us in good stead for five years. It has three strategic directions and not five compared to the previous plan and also nine supporting objectives under those uh, strategic directions down from 18 in the previous plan. So the new plan is more integrated, uh, hopefully less siloed. It will ensure our focus um, and we wanted to make sure that it reflected uh, what was heard during consultations with stakeholders, including staff, partners, patients, families. Um, and there were appro approximately 400 people contributing to this plan. Um, so the plan actually focus focuses on patient-centered care, safety, research, uh, and leadership. Uh, it's intended to be inclusive, so we're all leaders in some way. We can all contribute to uh, discovery or implementation of new knowledge, and we all serve, whether it's our patients, clients, colleagues, uh, partners, or others. So drilling down into the three strategic uh, directions, the first of them is to serve, and it's why, we, why we're here. Uh, we think this is very mission-driven, 
and it has a focus on including patients and families as partners in all that we do and so that uh, collaboration to uh, make sure that we are listening to the patient's voice um, and that we are providing exceptional service and care so a real focus on collaboration uh, and the experience of those we are serving so we will provide exceptional person-centered care uh, and we that is intended to be from the patient's perspective we may think we're providing exceptional person centered care and the patients may not agree with that so it's really uh, to measure from their perspective uh, we'll champion high quality care making sure that the therapies that we're providing uh, are evidence-based and having a continued unwavering focus on safety and we'll strengthen our healthy workplace and so that our staff um, can better support our patients and each other and receive uh, satisfaction and be engaged in their very challenging work. We have for each strategic direction um, measures to identify how over the course of this strategic plan uh, we are ensuring that we're executing on the strategy and ex achieving the results uh, that we uh, are, are working towards. Our second strategic direction is discover and it is intended to be uh, much broader than formal research. It's an opportunity for everyone across the organization to be involved in quality improvement and so that focus on inclusion again and we're spreading best practices throughout the hospital with a goal to provide better service and that certainly uh, would be in the clinical areas but as you can imagine that would apply to many, many areas uh, across the hospital. So under this strategic direction, um, as you may recall, I mentioned a, a few moments ago that the history of uh, research at Waypoint began with uh, a focus on our forensic programs and you'll see through this strategic direction, we're really expanding on that uh, as we increase collaboration with patients and families uh, will strengthen our leadership and collaboration in patient oriented research which is uh, a, a new and growing direction um, continued focus on knowledge translation so generating new knowledge seeking it out and then implying it uh, to make sure that we're using it across the hospital and establishing an international center of excellence in forensic mental health uh, research the creation of this center uh, of excellence doesn't mean that we're going back to uh, or reverting back to a narrow, narrow focus on forensic, but what uh, we know is that our provincial forensic programs are very unique. Uh, they're one of a kind and uh, as we're the only provider in the province, it provides us an opportunity to undertake unique research and provide some leadership in this area. So we also have some measures there in terms of research projects with uh, patients as partners, uh, spreading of new knowledge and uh, measuring uh, the outcome in terms of higher quality care and uh, increasing our uh, work and publications so that others can learn from the work that we're doing. And our third strategic direction and the final one is uh, LEAD. This strategic direction takes us beyond uh, the walls of the hospital. As I mentioned, um, no organization can be all things to all people. Uh, and so this objective is intended to uh, provide better integration of care with and in support of our partners. Our goal uh, is to continue to be a trusted partner uh, across the system we um, also want to make sure that our work is supporting better overall health for our patients and clients and that includes the social determinants of health we know particularly uh, in mental health care how important uh, housing and food security uh, economic status is to um, achieving good health this strategic direction also calls us to uh, embrace technology uh, data and business intelligence and again all with the goal of improving access to care and the quality of care. I mentioned earlier our campus and so we have to continue to focus on our physical infrastructure 
Um, we've been successful with our one and a half new buildings, uh, but we do still require investment and improvement. And we have a, a long-term master plan for our entire campus, and this will help us move that forward. I mentioned the master plan. We have a number of uh, more detailed plans supporting our current strategic plan. And with this new overarching uh, direction set in this strategic plan, we'll now update these supporting uh, documents and they will uh, more, uh, provide more granular detail around what are our next steps. Uh, which sort of is the question, where do we go from here? So communication with many stakeholders. Uh, again, thank you so much for being here today to hearing about uh, the new work that we're going to set out uh, to do. And we're going to be communicating in a number of different ways over the next uh, several months just to get out the message and help people understand the work uh, and the goals that we are working towards. Um, our leaders across the organization are very busy developing action plans to achieve uh, the strategic directions and objectives. We've had for the last number of years a particular focus on strategy execution or implementation. It's not just about having a strategic plan and having it sit on a shelf, but actually it's important for everyone across the organization uh, to be working towards the same goals and understand how uh, our, for each of us our day-to-day -day work contributes to the plan and our collective um, success. So we're now very busy um, planning on our activities that will be the first year under this strategic plan and guide our actions for 20, um, 20, 2021. It's hard to imagine we're in 2021. Um, so thank you so much again for being here uh, today. We're very excited to uh, start this next phase of our journey. Um, thanks to everyone for their support uh, over many years. We really are stronger together and um, we know that from the results that we're able to achieve. So we do, um, maybe um, I'll see if there are any questions and then I know our board chair is going to just make a few closing remarks and we also do have hard copies of the strategic plan if anyone is interested in that. But it's also available digitally uh, and will be posted on our website. So any thoughts or comments? <coughs> Glad to have any feedback. And I should say, uh, we've been taping this. It's been going out across the organization. So if anyone has a question, we'll use a microphone so that others can uh, hear it. Thoughts or comments? And John, over to you. Thank you, Carol. <clears throat> it's hard to uh, follow Carol, as may, you, may, uh, you may know. I just have a few remarks from the Board of Directors, your voice, uh, as part of Waypoint. We are extremely proud of the hard work that's gone in and behind the strategic plan. It certainly is different in its emphasis from previous years where we worked on corporate issues or safety issues, uh, financial issues, where we looked at uh, engagement of staff and training and other priorities that are common with most big corporations. As well, this year, we didn't let go of any of that. We think it's being really well managed. Uh, we are continuing to accomplish many of the great ideas that have brought us this far with patient care and with safety, but we also wanted to put some higher level priority onto the three priorities that Carol talked about. And from a board point of view and a community point of view, it all comes down to just one thing for us. And that one thing is patient care, patient evolution, getting our patients to a safe place in life where they can live as normal a life as possible with all the supports that our research and our staff teams and our partners can provide for them so that life can carry on and be as it should be, as they deserve. And that's why we're here. And that's why our strategic plan has prioritized research, leading, and partnership 
And that is why I think that the board, on your behalf, is extraordinarily pleased, proud, and optimistic that the next five years will bring Waypoint and all the people who come in contact with us for health, for safety reasons, for uh, mental health issues, will get the finest service that we're capable of providing no matter what. So having said all that, uh, I just want to say on behalf of the Board of Directors that we're extraordinarily proud of our senior team and all levels of our staff who've contributed to the last 100 years and who are going to be with us for the next 50 years at least. Certainly Carol and I will be here for another 100, maybe 150 <laughs> years in spirit if nothing else. I'd also like to say that our volunteers that help us implement our strategic options are wonderful, committed people who add a tremendous amount. And lastly, but most important perhaps, are you folks here today. Many of you are partners, many of you are sponsors. Many of you, uh, we bend your ear to get advice. We get uh, support that often we just don't share with other people, but you help us be as strong and positive in the day-to-day -day operations that we have here. Not every day is easy, as you know, but when you have people that you can rely on, like yourselves, who uh, are morally there and just give us a smile, uh, we move along with a little bit more energy and a little bit higher step just because of that. And so we're grateful for you to come today and to, to share this thinking. And, and uh, the takeaway would be, please tell everybody what you heard today. Take the coffee home with you, put it on your coffee table and your kitchen table, share it with your friends and neighbors, and maybe with people who, you know, secretly would like to come and have some service or uh, just iron out a few things that, that are bothering them. So lastly, on behalf of this great corporation, Waypoint, Center for Mental Health Care, I'm pleased to be able to say thank you to each and every one of you for all that you do for us, morally encouraging all the ways that you do it. Uh, we're grateful and thank you very much. And especially thank you for coming and giving us that support, that visible support that we thrive on very much. Thank you.